Hey you guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another day in the life video. So I just headed in to the office. I'm sitting outside about to go in. We're about to have a whole day planned ahead of us and get a lot of stuff done. So this is gonna be a work with me day in the life of a full-time reseller. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm about to go into my office. I have a 2000 square foot office where I run my business out of. And I also have three employees that help me. We go to thrift stores, we find items for cheap, and then we flip them on sites like eBay and Poshmark for a profit. And so today's gonna be a glimpse into how I run that business. I did not always start with this scale of a business. I started at home as just a hobbyist reseller sold in their spare time. So if you want to grow to this scale, we do have videos on this channel all about reselling and how to get there. But for now, I'm going to run in because we have a little over 140 items to ship, which is a lot. Today is a Monday, so it is everything over the weekend. Let's go. Step one, wake up, brother, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Life ain't easy, yo. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. You always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride uh. Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost uh. We had a lot of ThreadUp stuff that we were gonna sell on ThreadUp That we've been waiting to send But ThreadUp for, like, how many months, Nikki? Has it been, like, I feel like it's been, like five six months yeah we haven't been able to print labels so i don't know how long that's gonna be i don't know how much stuff is here probably like 40 ish items we're just gonna go ahead and list and probably do a reduced price on here's a mark on one of those items i'll pull that and then just see how they sell on ebay and poshmark so i do have a ton of stuff to get done today but one of the things i definitely want to get done is unboxing this teddy blake bag teddy blake reached out to me and asked me to do an unboxing of one of their bags and give my honest feedback and thoughts first impressions i love the packaging of this it's like unwrapping a present everything is packaged really nicely and it comes in a duster bag so I actually have heard of Teddy Blake before and I've honestly heard really good reviews about it from other influencers as well as just stuff that I've read online. And what I know about the company before reading a little bit about them is that their brand really promotes luxury for everybody. So they promote having high quality luxury handbags but at a fraction of the cost that you're going to get from other designers. You guys, this bag is so Ready. So Teddy Blake is supposed to be known for basically being luxury quality, but at a fraction of the price, which you guys know, I love a really good deal, but I also like quality products. This thing is like such a great shape too. It's very like, I don't know how to say it, kind of rigid in a way because of its high quality. I like a rigid bag. I like a bag that can stand up which this one does. I also really love that it's got handles, but it's also convertible. I went ahead and dropped the strap a little bit to make more room to wear it as a crossbody. I really love the adjustable strap. I think this is gonna make sourcing with this very, very easy. Because I'm a reseller, I'll just say that I also checked the sell-through rate of this, and it's pretty good. You should look it up. The reviews are really good on this bag, and I would have to agree. I absolutely 
love it. So excited to use this. I'm actually going to go convert my purse over and put all of my reselling gear in here so I can take it with me to go sourcing. I absolutely love it. They sent me this bag and asked me to unbox and review it. And yeah, 10 out of 10, I absolutely love. And for the price that you get with the quality, I do think that it is worth it if you are looking for a luxury quality bag. A little bit about Teddy Blake, in case you are interested, is that they make all of their products with premium Italian leather. And I will say this does feel like luxury and actually smells like real quality leather. It's made in Italy with really high quality materials that are going to made to last. Teddy Blake's designers are all the time creating new designs and new handbags, and they release new collections every month. So check them out if you'd like to find your next luxury handbag. So we are at the first thrift store. One thing I've really been enjoying lately is going to the kit section and trying to find smaller items to sell for good money. They're just so much easier to list. I put back those Sorrel boots, but I did end up picking up this kid's L.L. Bean jacket. I'm gonna have to give it a wash to give it some love. And then I also found another L.L. Bean jacket. Also gonna have to wash this one, but they should sell for pretty good money. Then I went to the shoe section and I found these pair of Ariat boots. Now I was really debating getting these, but they wanted $8.50 for them and the inside was peeling. But if they were in good condition, Aria is a great brand to pick up. <laughs> Later I found these Born boots. I like picking up Born leather boots when they are in taller shafts. This one was like a knee length and I did end up getting those. I think we paid about $8.50 and they should sell for about $40. What is it? This is a vintage Easy. Eddie Bauer. Eddie Bauer zipping. Oh, nice. Lined trench coat. Do you want to watch me get grumpy today? <laughs> Number one rule of buying large coats make sure that they zip. can't make my hands work. Maybe not. Maybe that's why it's here. Oh. Or we might be leaving it. <laughs> not don't unzip it ever again. <laughs> I can't zip the rest of the way because it's all my hair weird. Okay, so this brand is called Crockett and Jones. And it looks kind of fancy. Those are totally mine. They want $9.50. I'm going to wear them. But we need laces. But I think it's worth it. So these shoes actually ended up being our best find of the day, probably actually their best find of the month. And I did comps on these. They had an extremely, extremely good following. They had comps that were absolutely ridiculous. Everything was going for hundreds of dollars. So I decided to take the risk and to get them. Now these shoes do need quite a bit of work. I'm not going to lie. You can see I'm going to have to clean them up quite a bit. I'm going to have to brush out the suede and I'm also going to have to get laces on the shoes. I actually already ordered laces off of Amazon while we were in the thrift store. So so those should be arriving soon. But not only that, I'm also going to have to do extensive research on these to get them listed, but I still thought it was worth it based on the hundreds that I might make. The research that I'm going to have to do is because these shoes were made in England. By the way, if you see any shoes made in England, I would definitely look them up. They tend to be pretty good sellers and really well made, so people like them. But when shoes are made in other countries, oftentimes their sizing is for that specific country. So I'm going to have to go to a size chart, figure all of that out, figure out how their sizing works, and just do some more research on it in order to get them listed. It's definitely going to take me a lot longer. And so when I'm at a thrift store, I do kind of weigh in those factors. If it's something I don't normally sell, is it actually going to be worth all this time that I'm putting in? For hundreds of dollars that are probably going to sell very quickly, I think yes, so I am going to pick these up. Here is another pair of Ariat boots, but these ones are in much, much better condition. These are a pair of men's leather Ariat boots. Had these been cheaper, I definitely, definitely, absolutely 100% would have picked these up, but they wanted $40 for these, and that is, I'm sorry, just too expensive to pay for this particular style, so I did end up leaving those behind, unfortunately. They're a little rough around their edges, but I just ordered some laces. 
What did you get? Uh, Wallace and Barnes and Burberry. Oh. I don't know what I'm for yet. Not coffee. marked up? No. Oh, Burberry's. Nice. It's a nice jacket. So I started going through the women's clothing now and I come across this women's spider zip jacket. Do you guys remember when this brand used to be like the thing to pick up? Like you could sell this brand for so much money and it would go really quickly. Yeah, that's that's not the case anymore. I've seen this brand sold a lot at TJ Maxx and Marshalls for ridiculously discounted prices and new tags. So this is a brand in general I'm pretty much skipping on unless it's like a really, really high quality maybe down jacket. But otherwise, I've been leaving this brand behind. I came across this Bernhard Altman, I think it's how you pronounce it, vintage, I believe, 1950 sweater. This thing was absolutely gorgeous. It was 100% baby lamb's wool, and the main reason I looked at it besides the quality was I saw that it was made in Scotland, and that is a really good indicator of something that might be high quality. A lot of these Irish wool companies have extremely high followings, and so I really like to look into them when I come across them. This one was a brand I've never come across before, but I'd highly recommend it. Um, I think they sell more than, than just sweaters. But when I did research on this, this is a vintage brand that does seem to have a following and it seems to resell for quite a bit. I had a kind of guess on the pricing on this, but I think I'm going to list this for $75 or best offer. like the colors on that. It's very old. Kind of southwestern-ish. Did you do... Columbia is a brand I pretty much stopped reselling altogether for a while because the sell-through rate dropped and also the prices dropped. However, lately they seem to have a resurgence with the new aesthetic of Corpcore, Granola Girl, like these outdoorsy wear is apparently a new aesthetic everybody is into. And so I have seen a little bit of a resurgence on that. And so I am looking into Columbia pieces a little bit more, but I am being super picky. trying to get you through the corners. <laughs> Your ventriloquist moment. Okay, I'm coming. Where are you? Back up. Back up. It's right around here. <laughs> would you put me in your cart? I would. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on how much you are. Free. Priceless. Free AF. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Talbot's has really become a great bread and butter brand for me, but I do try to focus on the larger sizes, particularly in the jackets or the blazers. I've noticed that larger sizes in this category sells extremely well. So that's why I was looking at these. I put that green one back because I thought it was a little bit too faded, but I did end up getting this Talbot's black blazer with the faux leather pockets. That should do pretty good. Kind of the exact same thing with this brand. Try to focus on the larger sizes. I do actually like to pick up sizes larger than large in JGL because I feel like they just move so much faster. But I did end up getting this blazer because I did a comp on this particular style and it seemed to be doing pretty well. I always have really good luck with dresses here for some reason. Since Nike and I do spend so much time in the car together because... If you don't know, we have to travel pretty far to get to a good sourcing location, and we do that pretty much every day. So we're spending a lot of time together in the car, which would otherwise be wasted time. I mean, sometimes we do chat about personal stuff, but mostly we try to focus on business while we're in the car and get any conversations that we have done during the car ride. So if we're at the office and we want to have a business conversation or discuss future goals or something going on that we'll usually say, hold on, let's reserve that for the car ride. It just helps us maximize the most use of our time. And so we had a really good discussion about future plans for 2023. You guys can drop a comment down below. Let me know what your goals are for 2023. But We are currently in the middle of discussing that during this car ride. 
pink or yellow? Is that what you said? Honestly, I don't know. I feel like it's been a few weeks. I think I stopped here a few weeks ago, um, but I didn't find much. It also seems like they haven't been putting out a lot of new stuff. I got a couple things, but I don't know how good they are. North Face Extra Large Women's Lake. They don't really feel like leggings, though. I'm gonna have to look them up. And then Corduroy's been really in for some reason. It's their J. Crew. Yeah. The fancy stuff. So it really depends on the style with this one, but I find this brand to be a really great outdoorsy wear brand to pick up. It is Mammoth M A. M M U T. This one is a soft shell kind of like fleecy jacket. I picked it up for $5.99. It was a size extra large, so I think that's really gonna help pull through the sale. And I should be able to assist, I think, for about $40. I sold this brand in the past and it has performed really well. Now I am. Oh. 100 bucks. Corduroys? Really? Yeah. They're vintage. I found, um, I've got a little bit of discoloration, but they do. But yeah. They're like 18 to 60 something. So, like, evil. Yeah. I found some, uh, at the baggies, the regular jeans, but they had issues. Not here. You guys know I can't pass up a good Y2K moment. I thought these mud shoes were super cute. These are gonna sell so fast. I know you guys think I'm crazy, but mud, no boundaries, the older label shoes and clothing do really well, especially shoes in that chunky black heel. So I did get those. This is another one I would have definitely have gotten, but this had the heel like cap missing, but this would have been another great Y2K style with that square toe. I think I'm going to sell those mud shoes for probably around $45. You guys will see during these surf with me videos that we really try not to touch every hanger. It is something that I've really had to train myself and my team not to do because if you have to look at every single label and every single aisle, you are going to be at the thrift store for so, so long. And in my opinion, if you're only picking up, let's say 1% of the stuff in the thrift store, there's no reason to go through every single item. So we've really tried to train ourselves to cherry pick and to just kind of scan and skip on touching things until we find something we think is worth investigating. Highly recommend this if you are a newer reseller or even if you are somebody who constantly resells. If you're finding yourself touching every single hanger, to try and challenge yourself to just cherry pick because it can make the world of a difference on how much time you are spending in the thrift store. And yes, you may be skipping on some items, but I think that the time you gain back is worth the risk. But not the okay, so Calvin Klein has been a brand I've been experimenting with for a little bit of time now, and so far so good. It's been performing really well. I do try to stick to more substantial pieces in larger sizes, and I found that since this brand does retail for quite a bit, if you can find the ones in larger sizes, you can actually get a decent amount of money for this. In this case, this was a really nice wool blend coat and also was a size 18. Beautiful style too. So I ended up getting this. It was on a discount, so I did not pay that much. I expect to sell this for probably around $65. You guys, I wanted to pick this up so bad. This was a vintage, like kind of grandma knit cottage corey. I thought this was, was very cottage core. I really wanted to get this. I thought it was super dainty, super cute. Unfortunately, it did have some stains, but this is an example of something I definitely would have picked up based on style, and it probably would have sold for $40 to $50.
So we just teleported to a new thrift store. We did not find much at this store. This one we don't usually have good luck with, but after running through really quickly, we did find this prana jacket. I also found this pure Jill women's tunic sweater. I thought that was really pretty. And then I also found, picked this one up based more on style, was this pole denim jacket with the studded details. I thought this was super cute and really on trend. Sorry, we actually talked in this, but they had turned down for what blaring so loud that I'm pretty sure I would have gotten a copyright uh, claim and you guys would not have been able to hear us. So we picked up this North Face. We actually paid up for this. We paid, I think she said it was $15. We expect to sell it for $40 to $45. It's a really nice lavender, basically new jacket. And then we also found this really interesting, intimately free people, super oversized, a uh, little tunic sweater. I thought this was so cute and I think it is a newer style. It just felt almost new. We were talking about how the buttons didn't seem um, very like free people. All right, so that was the last store. We did not find much in there, but probably the best one was that intimately free people item that you got. Oh, score. But we are going to end the vlog here. We found about 40-ish items today. Um, I don't know, are you pulling that up right now? We found one of them is like randomly really large. I copied and pasted from the North Face website. That's why. Um, we found forty-two items today. We found forty-four then because I have a couple on the needs wash yeah, page. Yeah, that's good. And we spent. Hold on. Let me tell you. Hold on. Hold up here. We spent today one hundred and sixty-six dollars and eighty-eight cents. Feels like cheap for us. It is. And we should make, with the exception of those Crockett and Jones shoes, we do not have a price on Oh, yeah. We should make $1,481. Dang. Plus, you said you were going to list those, like, what, 200 ish? Yeah, so at least so, $1,600. Like $1, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. All in all, a pretty good day. All in all, I'll take it. So it's really blurry here, but what Nikki is trying to show you is our sourcing spreadsheet. We have a shared Google Sheets document that ourselves and another employee that helps us source has access to. And basically what we do is, since we're already doing the comp anyways, checking the sold listing to figure out whether we are going to pick an item up or not, since we're already doing that work there, we decided that we would rather not have to go back when we go to list the item and comp it again to figure out pricing again because I'm sorry, maybe you are superhuman, but there is no way if we are picking up 250 to 280 items every week that we are going to remember every single item and what we comped it for. So while we're going ahead and doing that work already in the thrift store, we just go ahead and pop the, a short title in. We put down how much we actually paid for it. That way, if there were any sale stuff, we don't have to remember that either. We can just put it right on the sheet. And then we also put what we expect to sell it for along with any notes we found along the way while doing our research. And then we can reference the sheet later when we go to actually list the items. We just find our bucket for that sourcing date, literally the date. So if it was like December 12th, which I think this one was, then we're going to go to our December 12th bucket and then we're going to go to our December 12th Google sheet and click on it. And then all of those items are going to be listed there. This has been super beneficial and not wasting time. But we are going to end the vlog here. Thanks for coming along with us and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.